right guys you join me for another short session just a few hours out today and i'm down at the edenvale lake in westbury one by one it's doing district tangling um apologize in advance if you have trouble with the audio but obviously right behind me is the main road and it's just a constant stream of traffic coming through um i have seen some shows um out in front and up to the the left hand margin where the where we've got like the sort of so cut barrier i don't know what is the proper name for it is but yeah, there's been a couple of shows up there, so I've smashed some single hook baits out there. And uh, I've tried to get some freebies over the top, some 50 millimeter strawberry whites, but the seagulls are bang on it. And I don't really want to get the spod rod out today. So it's a case of I'm fishing two single hook baits and the odd freebie that's managed to get down on the deck. But um, yeah, hopefully I'll get back to you guys with the fish. Okay guys, so on the first rod we've got the Ronnie set up and with a uh, Mad Bakes Pastel P-Fish pop-up. Um, and we are back on the COG system today. Um, this is what I normally use, what I've been using it for getting on the last couple of years now. Um, those of you that don't know about the COG, it's basically um, designed by Corda and it is designed so that the rig is being picked up at the heaviest point of the lead i'm also do center gravity um rod two we've got ronnie again um with the pineapple and butyric and as you can see there i'm demonstrating what would happen if the fish shakes its head that little swivel will pop out um allowing the lead to be back on the lead clip system and so it can eject for the fish's safety if need be Okay guys, so as you just seen, I had a run there, but unfortunately um, it took me into a snag almost straight away, so um, I've had to recast and uh, brought it a bit further back from the uh, barrier this time. But end of the day, those things happen, but yeah, it's back out there now, so hopefully there's plenty more where that comes from. Close now. Right guys, so we haven't had anything on the right hand rod. Um, it's been out there a good half an hour or so on that sort of pale purple hook bait. Um, gonna bring it in now and put a uh, faithful juicy peach on. Get that back out there. Um, what I think I'll also do is bring it a bit further back. I mean, this one was clipped up pretty close to the out of bounds um, but yeah I'm gonna get this hook bait changed over and uh, get it back out there but just a bit further out in open water um, don't know if you can make it out but we're over there towards the old inlet pipe years ago used to be the original disabled swim but I'm gonna sort of bring it out maybe a rod length off and try there so that there are still fish about out there, so hopefully I'll get one. Just check that that sinks okay, but it should do. And there we go, beautifully on the bottom. So let's get this one out there.
well, no sooner as I put that right hand rod out, the left hand rod tore off, which was just, oh no, we're on that line, need to keep off that line, I forgot about that. Yeah, which was uh, on the Mad Baits Pineapple or Ambuteric 12mm pop up that we put over by the uh, sluice barrier. I think that's what it is, I think it's called a sluice barrier. But yeah, uh, I did in fact change this rig actually. I went to my tackle box after that because the fish that I lost it actually completely done me. Um, I lost the rig and everything but fortunately I got obviously the, the lead end back so um, I had a stiff fringe rig tied up a couple that I tied up so I'll show you that once we get this well hopefully once we get this one in guys just gonna whoa proper shaking its head there I just want to I want to try and keep it away from that line might have to go under Quite sure at the moment. Yeah. What I'm going to try and do is put this underneath that line. Oh, trolls and tribulations, eh? Yeah, there we go. We're out in the open with this one now. Feels half decent. Feels pretty pretty heavy. It's doing us. Get the net ready. Oh, oh there we go. Nice little swirl on the surface there. Whoa. Certainly knows where he wants to go. Try and keep him away from that other line. This just, fish just does not want to give up. I'm not going to lie, guys. I have got our mate. Crazy. So 
hell of a tail on it to explain the fight. Come on, is that it? Are we there? No. Running that shit, bank. Running that shit, bank. Running that shit, last night. Running that shit, bank. Running that shit, last night. Running that shit, bank. Running that shit, last night. Running that shit, bank. Running that shit, last night. Running that shit, bank. Running that shit, last night. Running that shit, bank. Running that shit, last night. Running that shit, bank. one I think I might get, have to get the scales out for that bad boy well what about that for a fish then guys just under 20 pound of seriously hard fighting Edenvale common unbelievable but yeah let's get her back and hopefully there's more where that come from thank you Okay guys, so this is the rig that um, we just caught that fish on. The uh, stiff hinge rig. Um, I've simply tied this up with 25 pound boom material from Corda with the crimps. And then that goes down to 15 pound mouth trap fished with a size six trotty and a pineapple and imbute trick by Mad Baits. And uh, as you can see, I've got that slight curve in it there just to help with anchoring that hook in the bottom lip. Deadly rig really, can be, can be fished on any sort of substrate um, and especially a good rig in the winter. And on top of that, a good rig if you're fishing a lake with wary carping, it's very hard for them to get away with that and doing you. So, Let's get it back out there, see if there's any more. All right. Take a look at the camera at the footage. This one tore off, the left hand rod again, and uh, yeah, this is the end result. Lovely chestnut mirror, probably about, I don't know, 11 12 pounds. But yeah, taken again on the Mad Baits pineapple and butte trick, and uh, the stiff end rig, 
passed over to the left hand corner to get it back. Thank you. Right, there we go, guys. Fish number three. Again, taking on the stiffing rig and the pineapple pop up. Again, sorry about the lack of footage. It's just gone a bit crazy here. I haven't had a chance to get the camera sorted properly. But yeah, let's get her back. Right guys, so since that um, third fish, there's been no more. Um, I don't know if it got anything to do with it, but a cormorant appeared out in the lake having a whale of a time. And uh, I sort of got a feeling that the carp might have moved, got pushed out to the other side of the lake maybe. Um, but yeah, unless I get any more, I've uh, got about probably another 15 minutes or so um, before I reel the rods in and head on back. The temperature is also dropping now as well. But yeah, unless I manage to snare any more, I will um, catch you in the next video. Um, I'll also do a short video um, where I'll show you like tying up the stiff hinge rig. I'll include that in that little series that we've got running. But yeah, thanks for watching guys and uh, hope you enjoyed the video and uh, see you all again soon next time. Thank you, bye for now. There we go guys, there we go guys, always the way in it. Just as I was literally about to start reeling the rods in, this left hand one's picked up. A uh, bit of a contrast to the other fish, didn't really pop the fire, I thought it was actually a bream. There we go, lovely little common, with about 10, 11. Yeah, I'm gonna get this fish back now, get the rods in, get back home. But until next time guys,